afternoon everybody here we are sunday now a bit unusual i know we're doing weekends but i wanted to share with you a little bit of information on how to use the secret keyhole this was the starting point for everything to do with locket lane because as you can see it's all started in the background and it depends where you go looking through this keyhole is where you sort of end up and of course it's a little bit of fantasy you can choose where you want to go and what you put behind it so you can see here look this is a, a little sugar mouse looking through with a quite a large butterfly going on there so very very fantasy you've got a little townhouse this could be your own town you know having a little bit of a, a spring sort of garden fate kind of thing uh, and I think Angie did this one. You look, she's put the Halloween, the cat in there. It looks amazing. And this is the one I sort of did for um, the HSN demo the, the other week. Um, so I thought I'll show you how to do that. I'm not going to go into colouring and things like that. But what I am going to do is show you how to actually use this stencil to create this lovely little world here. So first thing you do when you're looking through it is um, write your numbers on your stencil. Uh, because it's really important if you're following the instructions that that's what you do so here we go that's how your stencil is going to sort of come to you blank and then this one you can see look i've put my numbers on make sure you use um, a permanent pen like a sharpie something like that and that'll sort you out so that matches that all good to go now the thing is when you're looking at any of my stencils don't sort of take them completely oh my goodness me it's got to be exactly the same you know do your version of it i'm giving you the instructions look through them look at the pictures read them through and I think once you get the hang of it you'll be off and you'll be doing your own thing with it but it's sort of getting that first little bit isn't it getting to go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a start I'm just going to sort of keep that uh, to one side so I can see what it's it's doing but you don't need to you need to sort of look at this and that's the most important thing okay so I've got a piece of uh, cardstock you're looking at about an A5 piece of paper for this though so it's not a huge thing it's just something you can do kind of small and looking at the stencil you have actually got two different sizes you see here and here so you can do a smaller keyhole if you want to I'm going to go in with that larger one so first thing to do is I'm coming in with pencil and I'm going to put a vertical line sort of in the middle of my page okay and then at the bottom again look notice I'm using the edge of my paper there I'm lining it up because I want a horizontal as well. So I've got like an upside down letter T. Okay, so far so good. Let's just move this card up a little bit. There you go, so you can see what we're doing. All right. Okay, so next little bit then is we, we need to decide, as I say, which sort of size we're going to do and how high up you want it to be. So I'm going to sort of imagine, uh, let's have a look at my paper, sort of about here. Now when I say here, let's have a look at that measurement just to help you out a bit. That's about, look at that, 10 centimetres. Doesn't have to be, but that's sort of where I've picked. And I'm going to put the dot in the middle there on that vertical line, okay, where, I'm, where I sort of marked it. And what I want to do here is I do want to put in the outside line, like so. That's number one. And the inside line. Now, the instructions suggest you put that inside line in a couple of steps later, but I'm going to do it now, okay? So I've got that. And then... The space underneath, I'm going to decide again, I can choose. See, I've got a long section or a shorter one. Because of where I've placed this, that's probably enough. Let's have a look as well. And I'm going to go, I'm actually going to line the edge of that up with that vertical line. You don't have to. You can have it as long or short as you want. Depends on what you want to do with your, your piece. But that to me looks okay. It looks about right. So I'm going to use that line. Okay. Don't need to put the horizontal in because it's already there. Now you'll notice if you look at my stencil, it's got some sort of dirty marks on there. That's because I don't always use the edge and I mark where it is. So when I turn it over, I line that mark up again with my vertical. Just so you've got sort of a, a bit of symmetry on both sides. Let's put that one in as well. Okay, so there you go. You've got your sort of your keyhole already. So if I get rid of that bit of line now there don't really need that or that just need that top part of the circle okay oh uh john just can you just pass me over my little rub out brush that's in the map back there it's a look at the pencil bit left left there you go there you go big sort of soft brush daft as you <laughs> thank you <laughs> there we go <laughs> all right so with that done 
I'm going to pencil in the rest of that circle. I don't necessarily need to, but I, I do want to know where those edges are. Okay. Here you are. <laughs> and then on here, I need to sort of create myself a bit of a step. So uh, when I say a bit of a step, it depends. You know, you, you can go as, as tall or as short as you like. And again, I'm going to line up my edge. And I'm going to draw that in. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to sort of follow that angle. I'm actually going to use that one there. It's a bit strong. Follow that angle. And I'm going to move out a bit. Imagine the thickness here. I'm going to do similar here. Put that line in. And then that loop joins into that bit there. You see? So if I turn it round, and I'm going to do the same again. So look at that line. Get your sort of angle. Move it out a little bit. So you can see the sort of similar thickness there. And along we go. And join it up. So you've actually got your shape with your double sort of lines all the way around. So here, I'm going to join this point to this point, And this point to this point. Okay, so you've already got that little bit of perspective now working its way inside. So I can remove the vertical line now. Okay, we only needed it to help us with that symmetry. Okay. So there's our keyhole shape. Uh, our next thing, we need to have some perspective, which is why our little sugar mouse came in. And you've got various shapes that you can actually use for that mouse. Um, I'm going to opt to go for something a little bit smaller. And notice, if I just zoom in a little bit, there you go. My number 12, you see, it's just slightly coming outside the keyhole. You can put it any side you like, or in the middle, you can have one or two if you want. And let's put that in. So I'm going to get rid of everything inside that shape. And there's the body, okay? Next little bit is the head. So my head, again, you see how I'm overlapping? No, I'm not really going to need all of that. So in goes the head, okay? So that's the first bit. From there, we're going to put a little loop in. And a little loop in. And again, look if I rub out those bits there. A couple of little flicks. There's the ears. Look at that. A little bobble for a nose. The whiskers, although I'd normally draw the whiskers in in pen afterwards. Okay. And then eyes. You want them to be kind of oval shape. Sort of looking up and in. There you go. I'm going to fill that bit in there. And that bit in there. Okay. So the tail, again, you can go either way with the tail. Whatever you want to sort of do. So... Let's have it so it's sort of coming on a bit of a wave. I'm going to go that way. There we go, double it up, a little curve at the end. So there's our mouse, so it's starting to sort of give you an idea that, you know, what's going on in there. All right, let's have a look at the whole thing. See, it doesn't look very big, it's kind of cute. So next little bit then is all about putting some of these houses in. And we're going to put them in first, not going to worry about steps, anything like that. And looking at the instructions, it starts here, look, on step nine. Draw in the stalk. Notice how it starts, oh, sorry, eight. So draw the shape first. And it says, look, number nine. So you can use one of the circles to help if you want, and then put in the stalk. So number nine, I think, is a little bit big there. So let's have a look at these. <coughs> just, you know, just for what I want to do. I don't want to use that one. I'm going to go in with this one. How do you turn a circle into a stalk? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just the top half of it in. Okay, and then from there I can put like a little bit of a curve in, like so. And then from there, let's put the bottom bit in. I'm just going to sort of do that lightly. You see? And then the stalk of it, it comes down. It's sort of a bit of a curve. Notice that I've not touched the top there. Because that will then come in like that. It goes like that. Okay, so that gives you your sort of your stalk shape. So you could do that freehand, or you can put more of them in using these circles. So let's put another one. Let's give it a next door neighbour. So again, like a part circle, sort of there, and it's going to have one 
or pierce it. You know, it, it all depends on what you want to do with it. If you want to have loads and loads, yeah, so you can do freehand, but I'm going to sort of work my way up this way. Let's have a little look. Okay. And then, of course, same sort of thing on all of them, which is why I've drawn all the sort of semicircles to start with. It gives you that shape. So this one is sort of coming down here. Now, I'm not worried about the base yet. I'm going to worry about that in a little bit. We'll sort that out. See, that one's going to curve there. And this one is going to come this way. So they're sort of all, you know, in between each other, mixed and matched. It gives us those shapes. So when you're drawing steps and things like that, I think it's best when you're doing this kind of a design to try and do it without using a straight edge because it gives it a little bit more authenticity. Again, just rubbing the bits out there so we've got our basic shape. So if I turn it round and let's have a look. I'm going to put, now you notice I've gone from that to that. Yeah, some little steps in. So at the moment they're sort of almost, they're vertical lines. They're not steps, but we'll sort that in a minute. Okay. See there, I don't need any because it's hiding behind that. So that's fine. So now let's have a look at this. You sort of want a step there. You see, now we can sort of rough them out. So I'm putting verticals in. So they, they look like they're sort of slightly unbalanced. See one there, look. Always kind of like that idea. All right. So we've got some steps there. Now with this one, we, we could put a few steps in here. You know, it depends again on where your sort of picture is and, and what you've done with it. So you see, we've got some, so it looks like they're following up. And that's the way of giving it, again, a little bit of real, <laughs> realism. I know it's not real, but a bit of realism. Okay, so that's that little bit there. So in this particular scene, we do have a moon. And uh, let's have a look, moon, you know, see, we've got the butterfly there. I'm gonna do that in a bit. Let's have a look at the moon, see, here you go. Uh, 21, draw the whole shape of the pen. Drawing some windows, so I'm not adding some more. We must have gone back. Here we go. All right, two smaller. So shapes eleven, then shape nine to create one to create the moon. So eleven. And again, if you want it a bit bigger, it's fine. You can go whatever size you want. So here's eleven, and nine. Do I want to go that big? Maybe not. I'm going to go look twenty and sixteen. I think. So this is where you can use it. As I say, whatever you want to do. See, I've got a full moon, but I want a part moon. See, 16 is a bit too, too big. Let's have a look at that. Well, 18. Let's have a look at 7. Now, what I'm doing, you see, I'm putting this circle shape to this edge. Because then if I draw around that, you see, I get a moon shape. So, again, it's all about you being a little bit creative and doing what you want to do with it. There's my moon. Okay. So let's come back to my little butterfly shape. And it starts, look here, again, I'm jumping around a little bit. It starts life, let's have a look here, moving back, see it's got bits in there, all the way back to number 12, okay? Number 12, at the top of the keel, just draw a thin loop. See, thin loop, and a bobble on the end. And that's as sort of uh, technical as we get. So inside here, now it's gonna go over the top of this shape. I don't mind, let's uh, put that in, so a loop, a bobble shape. Now, of course, if you wanted to draw that by a stencil, there's some circle shapes in there, you can do that. So that gives you that one, all right? And then from there, it wants to draw a curve. So let's do this in sort of sections, a curve. So around it comes, like that. And then I'm gonna come back in, that way got that shape and then I'm going to do another one from the same point but this time it's coming around so it's going to go under there and in there okay so it gives us our first little bit so then I'm going to come from that point again and this time I'm coming downwards a little bit bigger see there's that curve again and then it's coming along and in just get rid of those little lines inside there wherever I can just keeps it neat and then here we're going to do a larger one so we're going to sort of follow the shape a little bit but come out you see a larger one and then back in 
So it gives us that kind of thing. Okay. So I want to put a couple more in. This time they're a lot longer. So maybe this isn't a butterfly. Maybe this is more moth. But, you know, you can go as far as you want to go with it. Put that in there. Let's just get rid of that line. See there, it's not very curvy. Let's put my curve in. And another one sort of down here. little shape going on okay so when we get to step 18 you see there look there it is we've got these two antennae to put on so I'm not going to go as big as that I'm going to go a little bit smaller sort of there one there look and one there so that gives us our little butterfly let's have a little look at that okay see how it sort of works its way down it gives a bit of interest there so, yes, it's going over my little toadstool thing there. But, again, gives it a sense of depth, whereas this is in front of this. So that's absolutely fine, OK? So let's have a look at putting a little bit of detail on these houses before we, we do anything else. And this is all about having a bit of fun. You know, you want a doorway. OK, let's give it a door frame and a little door knocker. And let's put a little window in. So the little curved shapes. Let's go in a little bit. You see, because this is on the curve, my windows are on the curve. So you might want a couple of little windows in there as well, like a little window ledge. Let's have a little one there. And maybe a little cross in there. Okay. And underneath, I'm going to go from here. And again, this is the bits that you do in pen afterwards. Being that I'm just showing you how to draw this, I'm going to stick with pencil. Okay. Bit of a chimney. So which side? I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go this side. So let's give it a little bit of a, a wobbly kind of chimney there. So looking at this one, well, let's put in doorway with a, a door frame. See this one? I can put some little my little uh, bricks to the sides. You know, just sort of however you feel with it. Put a little handle there and a little window. And let's have window there again you can put frames around those as well if you like it depends they say what you want to do and a couple of windows there so one there and one there looks like it's looking at you doesn't it <laughs> and let's have the chimney sort of coming off this way okay and again you would put those lines in there so I would do that in pen I wouldn't do it in pencil and then go over with pen once you've got everything else sort of done all right so same sort of thing here so let's just do that whilst I'm thinking about it and smaller doorway because of course it's a little bit further back and uh, let's put a couple of little windows in put a couple in there as well you don't have to you know if you want to I think on the instructions it shows you windows but you can also put like little uh, sort of, you know, spots on there. They're not going to be perfectly round, so you know, keep them a slightly sort of odd shape. Let's have a few coming out, see? Okay, and again, you can add as many as you want of these, and you could have a whole town. You could have little fairy lights coming off it. I might do that, actually. Let's put a little, I put quite a tall door in there. Maybe just really tiny windows. All right, I wonder who lives in that one. <laughs> All right. Let's have a little look at that. Okay, so so far then, we've got our little sugar mouse. We've got our little sort of way in. The keyhole's done. The moon's in place. We've got our lovely little butterfly. And we've got our little houses. I so say you can add more if you want to, but I'm going to leave it at those many. So uh, once we've done this, it's about adding a little bit more interest. So first thing we're going to do is, is bring something down here because, of course, we want to balance it out kind of thing. See how it's sort of working that way? So I'm going to come in with a couple of little lines. And again, I'm just going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And curve over the top. And again, I would do this in pen straight away, usually, because this is going to be kind of the forefront. See a little bits like that, and they get smaller and smaller. And so let's have one coming out. So as much as you want to keep the little world contained, some of it, 
is going to come out. You know, like the butterfly, a little bit of this foliage here. Let's do another one. So again, if you only want a few of these, you can do that. You can have, you know, you can have these on the other side rather than the butterfly if you want. Let's put one in there. They're really nice to draw. Sort of flow once you get the hang of them. Yeah, let's do, uh, we've got four and let's sort of do one more. So it looks like it's sort of coming from inside. See, so you've just got a part of one showing there. I'm going to just strengthen that bit there. See, so that's definitely coming out of that. Okay. So with that bit done, we've, we've got to then have some sort of uh, larger pieces. Let's have a look. So I want one that's going to come all the way up here. So if we just have a look at the picture at the front you see here you've got these sort of lovely lines and shapes coming up and they sort of come from the back of everything so let's put one in so let's go straight up here like so and then it's got kind of uh, three little well maybe three to start with little dots on the end and then one either side like so and then if I do one this side and one this side Again, look, one there, one either side, one either side. So you've then got your five little shapes. You see how they slightly curve? Like that. So I'm going to do another one, a little bit lower down, like so. Put those little dots on. And see, that's going to come from the, the back of there. Again, it's always about what's in front, what's behind. So it makes it more real. You know, you can uh, imagine what's going on. See, I'm going to put one here now. That's going to, you're going to see a bit of that. So again, put one in there and into those two. And those two. And again, see that's going to sort of sit behind there. From that one, you're not going to really see much. Maybe just little bits of it there. Okay, let's have a little look at that. Okay, so you see you've got some like lengths now going up there. You've got these little sort of pieces hanging around in there. So we could add more of those, but I think we're going to leave that little bit. And we're going to come and have a look at the rest of the different bits and pieces you could do. So let's have a look here. What have we done so far? Again, I am going in a slightly different order, but we have got the butterfly in there. We've got the little houses, look. We've got the mouse in. So you see we've got these little sort of leafy type of designs here. These are really nice little bits and pieces you can add in. And then here, look, it shows you some little lines with little bubbles all over them. So let's have a look at those. There we go. So I think I'm going to do those, uh, the ones with the little lines and bubbles first. So let's put one in here. You see sort of little sort of shapes there. That's going to go behind, maybe one there. Okay. Oh, no, then let's go in and have a look. So this is about bubbles. And they're all slightly different sizes, all sort of working from one side to the other, forming this sort of shape. A little bit sort of fuller at the bottom, maybe. But then, once you get to there, let's double up that line. And then, let's do the next one. And again, I would be doing this in pen normally. I don't want to be going back over this afterwards. There we go. And then, of course, look at the lines. This one, you're going to sort of have parts of it, and then there, a little line, okay, maybe you want to have one here, now putting one in here is, is fine, but it's got to be smaller than this one, because of course it's further in, so in terms of like perspective, you don't want it to be as big, see, let's put another one in, and you could put any flower in here, it doesn't have to be the same as this, you see, so there's little leaves. I'm going to bring one in here. Look, a little line curved at the top, tiny little leaf. And then I'm going to do them all the way down the edge. Now these are slightly different than in the instructions because I'm putting a little stem. Look, the ones in the instructions, let's have a look, are the same thing at the top, but they join the stem. So you can do a mixture of both. Let's uh, put another one in here. See how it's sort of sitting behind and getting to join the stem 
So I'm going to put those around the flowers. Again, that these are a bit smaller because, of course, I want something a bit different there. Let's put one sort of there. See how it sort of wraps itself round. So other little bits. I mean, this is not necessarily in the instructions per se, but you could put little um, plant pots. It's like a little rectangle, but it's like chamfer. And um, let's put some little bobbles in there, maybe a little loopy flower. So you can add your own little bits and pieces. See, let's put one there. Do something similar, but look a bit bigger. Look a loop. Just changes it up a little bit, doesn't it? And let's have some little leaves coming off here. It looks like it's going behind. So with that all done, in a sense, it, it does need a little bit of shading and colour now, which I say I'm not going to worry too much about. Let's have a look at this bit. I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to bring one of those little leafy shapes out. And it's sort of working its way sort of into the real world. Yeah. Again. It's, oh, loops on the end there. Okay, so you see it's got this lovely little sort of shaping. Now, I'm going to just turn it this way a little bit. And here I'm going to split it into three. Now, depending on how wide yours was, you might not get three. So if not, do fine. Sort of a bit of a wavy line. And then let's imagine where that sort of centre bit was. See, I've put some little verticals. And then here I'm going to slightly angle it out a bit. See, I've put some little lines in. And the same this side. Slightly angle it out a bit. Okay. And then I'm going to make little cobblestones. So I'm going to draw around the shape. But they're going to be sort of wobbly curves around the edges. Let's see. Little, little shapes there. And same with that one. And same with these. So by angling them slightly, you've, you've given yourself a little bit of perspective there as well. So it does again look a little bit more realistic. You see? So let's just put a little bit of more depth in there on those steps because they're quite sort of wide. Okay, I'm just going to bring my torty on in. <clears throat> now I was going to say if I've got one, <laughs> I'm in the office, of course I've got one. So I'm just going to add just a touch. So I'm not really going to bring much any pencil in there. I'm going to just work on what I've got. Just so you get an idea of some shading. Okay. And sometimes, you know, if you're actually you're just drawing something, you want to see how it works. You know, because oh, I've only used like a HB pencil. But giving me a little bit something to work on so I can sort of see where it's going and what you would do with it now again instructions wise it sort of suggests putting a row of bubbles all around the outside there it's, that's entirely up to you what you want to do with it let's, let's just bring a little bit of structure in there I'm not going to do much as I say because I used a HB pencil so I'm not going to get much, but this is mainly once you've done the drawing, it's entirely up to you what you, you want to do with it. Maybe you want to go full colour, just a little bit. Let's, let's get a little bit of this in, see what's going to what's going to look like. Let's put this bit around those steps. See, and a little bit on. The moon there. Again, you don't have to do that. You can have a full sunny day if you want to. It's uh, your little world. Let's have a little bit around there. Maybe to that. So you might decide that you want to have like a, a monochrome inside, and then you want to have the full colour on the outside. so many different ways and of course in the instructions it gives you three different ideas to go with but once you've done that you can you know you can revert to lock it lane and 
things like that. Christmas close even, you know, and do your own little versions, whatever you want to do. What I am going to do, here we go, I'm going to bring in a little bit of my HB there. And I'm going to add some around the inside frame. Okay, we don't have to make it too neat. That's it. There you are. So working between that little butterfly there. Oh, actually, that's a little bit of baby on that end block. And I'm just going to add a touch of shadow. So all around the, on the inside. So just keeping it controlled, just adding a little bit of a swirl shape in. Sort of uh, giving it the idea that it is inside something. And then of course anything on the outside, like the butterfly, it's not going to go over. So, you know, you could turn this into being at Christmas in June as thing at the minute. You could turn this into a Christmassy scene, couldn't you? You could have snow in there and you could have, uh, you know, little conifer trees and things like that. And instead of having little plant pots, you could have little Christmas trees in there. And you could have a full scene of uh, the mouse looking in and, you know, there's just been snow on the hills. And, uh, you know, little, little mice skiing and things like that. All sorts of things. It's whatever you want to imagine. Okay. Little chimneys as well. Alright. So, having a little look at that, there's our little mouse. I think actually I'm going to put a little bit more shadow in there. Just a little bit. Just because he's at the front. Okay. And a little bit in there. Okay, so there it is. There's our secret little keyhole. If I just bring in, um, this is the one I did the other night. So you've got a bit of colour on there, but everything's monochrome in the background. You could even go back over with coloured pencils with this. And notice that I didn't actually use the butterfly. I have actually put a swirl around it instead. So if you wanted to change it up a little bit. Uh, colour, of course, just at this front bit. So that's what you're, you're sort of really focusing on. And again... If you're looking at um, putting something inside, you could just use the main outer shape to do your own thing with it. There's our little scene of our little townhouses. Look, you've got the little flowers, the steps again. Slightly straighter, these ones, because the houses are quite straight. Of course, your hills and your little bit of blossom. And then, of course, the coloured version of the one we've just done a little bit of. You see, my mouse has is is had a few more, <laughs> a few more pies <laughs> than that one. But you can see, look, the lovely little flowers, the same kind of leaves coming in and... Um, a background where it's got you know a bit of a, a darker sky there's your butterfly colored in but the general idea is that's how you draw it so if you want to have a go and, and see what you uh, what you can come up with by all means go for it i do have one of these i did draw a little black and white version so you can see there with the pencil and then once it's got the pen on it it, it does change it up a little bit so whichever way you you want to go with it that's how it sort of works so hopefully that's helped you out a little bit and given you a bit more of an insight as to how you actually use this keyhole. See that there's the little townhouse, the little mushrooms. Of course, you've got this one, little steps leading up to another door. So it's entirely up to you what you want to do with it and where you want to go. But I say hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight and you'll be able to pick that stencil up now and have a go at drawing it. So have some fun with it, enjoy it and let's see where these little magic worlds take you. As, uh, I know I can't, they're very addictive and I, I can't really stop once I start. So hope you feel the same and I hope you've enjoyed this. All right, everybody, take care. Have a lovely rest of your weekend and I'll see you soon. Okay, bye.